Marco from Performance Hypnotherapy. Have you ever wondered what the difference is between a lowered mental well-being on one side and a positive mental well-being on the other side? Well, Dr. Julianne Sightly knows a thing or two about this. She wrote a doctoral thesis on psychological and mental well-being. She says that it's not what you think that's that important. It's how you think that makes the difference. Your age, your gender, your job, your hobbies, your sexual orientation, your educational level, your economic or social status are important, but they're not that important. What's definitely more important is how you think about that. The processes that you run in your mind ultimately determine your mental well-being. So what are these processes? Well, there are five mental processes. The most important one for a lowered mental well-being is when you have the inevitable difficult situation in life, the inevitable hardships that life will throw at us, you will focus on that hardship. And rather than switching your focus to what can I do about this now, you will continue to focus on it. In doing so, you are focusing on something that you can't control and you will develop a sense of hopelessness. On the positive side, when the inevitable difficult experience in life comes up, you will observe it. You will spend some time analyzing it. And then you will ask yourself, what can I do about this now to make things a little bit better or to alleviate the suffering a little bit more? And as you do that, you start to shift the focus on yourself. You start to shift the focus on what you can control, which are your reactions to the inevitable difficulties in life. This is really the most important component of a positive mental well-being. And for someone experiencing a negative mental state, it's also the most important thing. Having a sense of hopelessness by focusing on that which you can't control, rather than on the positive side, focusing on what you can do to make things just a little bit better or to alleviate the pain or the suffering. What are the other processes? On the negative, you'll see the glass as half empty. you view things in a pessimistic way. On the positive, you'll see the glass as half full. You'll view things in an optimistic way. On the negative, you'll have a lowered self-esteem. And that means when you want to do something, you tend to say to yourself, I can't do that, I'm lazy, or something like that. On the positive side, when you want to do something, you tend to, use, tend to say to yourself, I can do it. I know that when I set my mind to something, when I establish the pathways, I know I have the motivation and the mindset to get there. And if I don't know how to get there, I'll find someone who does. That is a positive self-esteem. You value your strengths. On the negative, also, you set unrealistic goals. This is evident often in partners. Someone may look for a partner who has the perfect looks, the perfect personality, the perfect economic situation, the perfect, the perfect, the perfect, and then inevitably be disappointed because that person doesn't exist. On the flip side, on the positive, someone will set realistic goals for themselves, ones that, that are attainable realistically. So in terms of a partner, they'll look for someone who's nice. They'll look for someone who has a good relationship with responsibility, someone who doesn't shy away from problems but engages them and looks to solve them. They'll look for someone who's looking to enjoy and experience life's inevitable ups and downs together and get through them in a stronger and more resilient state. And finally, on the negative side, if you want to have a lowered mental well-being, you want to disengage from life. In other words, you want to give yourself the message that life is full of problems. This is called a disengagement from life. On the positive side, it's the opposite. The message you give to yourself is, life is full of adventures. It is an engagement with life. Dr. Cycli calls this cognitive hardiness, and what it really means is engaging with life. Now, the positive news from positive psychology research is that we can learn these processes. We can learn how to have a greater perceived sense of control. We can learn to be more optimistic. We can learn to have better self-esteem and value our strengths. We can learn how to set more realistic goals and we can learn how to engage with life and see it as an adventure. As Dr. Cycli says, it's not what you think or what you have or who you are that's that important. It's how you think that makes the difference. 
Thank you for listening. I hope you found value in today's video and I look forward to seeing you again soon.